All right, our new chapter is turn of the century. You need to write that down, okay? Make sure that you write the title down on every chapter. That way you can, when you're flipping through your notebook, you can find your chapters, okay? So the time period roughly here is from 1890 to 1910. That's the area we're in. Uh, this is a beautiful colorized photograph of New York City. And if you look at it, notice that, <clears throat> now, by the way, this is 1903, whenever this was taken. If you notice, look at the streets. They're made out of dirt, okay? In New York, there's skyscrapers all around, and the streets are still made out of dirt. So it's definitely a different time than it is right now, okay? All right, dawn of mass culture, okay? Mass culture means it's a culture that everybody experiences, okay? We all have this American culture. You learned kind of about that in the melt, with the melting pot last chapter. All right, uh, American leisure is the first topic that we're going to discuss, okay? In the early 20th century, which is the 1900s, okay, it's always a century behind, unless you go all the way back to the first one, uh, urban Americans escaped congested cities for entertainment. So, uh, y'all know from last chapter how nasty the cities were. Now, things are starting to actually pick up. They're starting to get better, but they're still crowded. New York City at this time is still, is actually the most crowded place on earth, okay? Um, so we have a couple of interesting colorized photographs. I like to put colorized photographs. That's a new hobby that uh, has happened in the last 10 or 15 years, people using Photoshop to colorize old photos. So we have ice delivery, okay, uh, at the turn of the century. There were no ice makers in your ice box. Okay, your ice box was literally a box that you would put ice in so it would keep the whole box cold. It was an ice chest that stood up, okay? You had a drain pan at the bottom. You had to hook it up to plumbing so it would slowly drain out the ice, uh, out the water. Now, when ice got delivered, it was relatively cheap and people bought it and it kept their food good, okay? You could also set up a makeshift uh, air conditioner with it. Uh, my uncle told me one time that he used to buy a block of ice like this and he would put moss on top and he would put a fan behind it and that would actually create an air conditioner for the whole room. So air conditioning did exist at this time, but it was not common and it was very expensive. Americans like to go to the beach, especially in New York uh, at the turn of the century. And you could tell, look at these lovely bathing suits. Uh, this is what they dress like. Okay. Um, in fact, ladies were banned from wearing bikinis and stuff like that in America. Now, that kind of thing was pretty common in France. In fact, in France, it's kind of common to go to the beach naked back then. Uh, they still have nude beaches today. Uh, but we don't have that many of them. But, man, look at that. Look at all the fun they're having in their... What are those? <laughs> anyway, I mean, you imagine trying to get a tan in that one? Okay. I'm going to the beach at 8. Ghost is back. Okay, next one. If it works. Okay, so uh, this is actually Washington, D.C. along the Potomac River. I can tell that because this is the Washington <laughs> Monument in the background. Okay, so if you're looking at this, this is a strange picture. What is this dude doing? Okay. This guy is actually measuring this lady's bathing suit. This is probably taken around the 20s, okay? So now we've progressed from the leggings and everything under the bathing suit to a point where now we can show knees, okay? Um, and man, look at those ankles. Anyway, so this guy is measuring, and actually the, the rule was your skirt had to be four inches above the knee. Some of you girls probably have heard that rule before. It's way back from the 1800s and it's never been changed. Uh, and it, it was a swimming suit rule. Now, this lady is probably going to get a ticket because hers is obviously, excuse me, hers is obviously more than four inches above the knee. All right, so one of the great things America used to like to do in New York is go to the first amusement park ever in American history, the first great one okay, which is called Coney Island. It's still there today, and you can see these people dressed up to go to the park uh, at Coney Island, and golly, they must be having fun, right? Now, 
I want you to compare that to how people dress at like Six Flags today or SeaWorld. Usually, you know, you got some people with some pretty short stuff on compared to this. So one of the big hits at Coney Island besides the rides was Nathan's Hot Dogs. Okay, hot dogs were a pretty new invention at the time, uh, roughly speaking, as far as the modern hot dogs go. And it was seen as trash food. Like everybody thought it was really unhealthy because if you know what goes into hot dogs, it's things like, you know, pig's ears and their nose and their armpits and stuff like that. And stuff that I'm really not gonna mention that just gets chopped off and thrown in the grinder for you to eat. <coughs> well, Nathan, decided he wanted to change the way hot dogs are actually uh, viewed by the public. So what he did is he offered free hot dogs to anybody that had a nurse's or a doctor's uniform on. The idea being that if a doctor's eating it or if a nurse is eating it and they're in uniform, must be healthy, right? Or maybe they just wanted free lunch, okay? So anyway, remember, you need to know that Amer America's first great amusement park was Coney Island. Okay, here's another Coney Island picture. Okay, uh, this is the kind of the back alleys of Coney Island, uh, Coney Island, excuse me. And uh, it featured one of the first roller coasters ever in America. And this is an all wooden roller coaster except for the railroad tracks. Now, modern roller coasters, they have these little couplings on it where it's basically an I beam and you can't fall off. The roller coaster can't fall off. The only thing holding this on is gravity, okay? But what about now? <laughs> What's holding it on here? Well, it's another force called centrifugal force, all right? So if you sling it like this, okay, if it goes up, the force of it going down, okay, the force of it going around forces it onto the track. There were many accidents with early roller coasters, okay? One of the scariest rides you could have back then was to be the first one to test out a new roller coaster because you weren't sure if you were going to live. Uh, and there was one roller coaster in Germany where like 80 something people died. They overloaded it and it went basically off of a, uh, it was a, a big old drop and then it came up like this and it came up into a curve. Well, it didn't make the curve. It just went drop and then it went shooting off of the roller coaster. And the whole roller coaster cart was made out of wood. So this thing goes like 100 feet into the air and crashes with 80 people on board. And it splintered apart and there were people with, you know, pieces of board sticking through them. It was a disaster. All right, y'all, that's Coney Island. That's it for this video.